option to choose whether you want your student to participate in remote learning or come to school for our four block system or a four block day, which will start at eight in the morning, end at noon, and then pick back up at home at 1.30 to three for remote learning for an hour and a half of chat time with their teachers if they have problems or they need extra help. So if your student is coming to school, they will be required to wear a mask. That's something we can't uh, sway from. It's required. Um, we have face masks that we'll be giving to students and uh, they, they just will be required to wear them. When the student gets on the bus or they come into school, they will have to be medically cleared. That means we'll take their temperature and we'll have a, a few questions that we have to answer. They have to answer before they can come on to the, get onto the bus or get into the building. If they're not medically cleared, the uh, office will be notified and the parents will be notified that their student needs permission to either uh, return home on their own or a parent needs to pick them up. Uh, some of the things that we have to do here at school besides just wearing them this, of the uh, face mask is uh, to keep our six feet apart and no hand no shaking hands no hugging you know none of that um, no physical contact if at all possible one thing that's completely different than uh, last spring was last spring it was it was very quick they didn't want anybody's grades hurt because of the unexpected departure from school. So they didn't count in grades. You, your, your grades couldn't go any lower. But this year we're prepared to start the way we are. Uh, we're prepared to go to remote learning. So grades count and your attendance is expected, whether it's from the remote site or here at school. Attendance will be taken and your student is expected to attend school on, on their designated days. And right now, those designated days are Monday through Friday. Every effort's going to be made during the school day to keep students together. For example, when they get to school, they'll be assigned a classroom. They go to that classroom when they, when they enter the building. If they're gonna eat breakfast, they would pick up their breakfast and go to that classroom to eat. Um, we're gonna keep the numbers down in those classrooms as much as possible. And then from there, the teachers will be the ones that move from classroom to classroom, leaving the students in, their, in that classroom as much as possible. Sometimes the students may have to leave the classroom. They may have to go to a, um, their special ed course, or they may have to go to a vocational course that we just simply can't do in that classroom or a science lab. But for the most part, we're going to try to keep them with their cohort in that classroom. They will have assigned seats on the bus. They will also have an assigned seat in the classroom. Um, and we're going to try to limit those, those kids in the classroom to make sure that we're trying to cover social distancing. Face masks, face coverings, whatever you want to call them, they have to be approved. Uh, face masks, face coverings to be worn at school, and they have to be on the bus. Uh, this is a directive from the Illinois State Board of Education, Illinois Department of Public Health, and Alina West does not have a choice but to follow the directive. If you do not want your student to wear a face mask, you will be given the option for your student to attend school through remote learning. Uh, just call the office at 217-357-2136 for more information. Student learning, teaching and learning. As students will receive remote learning training the first two days back to school. That way we're ready for them to uh, go to remote learning if we have, if we need to. Uh, we're concentrating on Google's Classroom and Zoom Pro. We want to limit the platforms that our students are, are using so that everybody knows what's going on. Uh, Mr. G will be uh, creating a cheat sheet on how to fix your common problems, how to get to those websites, and how to contact teachers that will be getting to every student. Students will attend school five days a week, whether it's re remotely at their home or, or here at school. Each student will have a Chromebook or a laptop assigned to them from the school to be used at home. So even if they have their own laptop uh, or Chromebook, we will be assigning them a school one. Hotspots will be paid for by the districts for those students who do not have an internet access. All of our classrooms have set, been set up for remote learning. There's cameras and audio in each classroom so that when you're at home learning, you are actually just participating in the same class as those here on site are participating in. 
except you're, you're at home. So there's a camera on the teacher, on the board, and there's audio, and they'll be able to ask questions. Students, your expectations are that you're to attend all in-person instruction if possible, or all your remote learning sessions if possible. You to bring your Chromebook or laptop charged to school every day. So if you're doing remote learning, you need your Chromebook or laptop charged every morning when you start the day. You'll utilize Google Classroom to complete and submit your classwork. You'll communicate with your teachers and you'll keep track of due dates. It is important that you do all of this because your grades count. If you don't participate, you don't do your work, uh, you turn in things late, it'll be just like it's been in the past. You'll have penalties to pay or work won't be uh, uh, collected. But your grades count, and if you don't pass your courses, you won't get credit for that class, and it could put your uh, graduation in jeopardy. If your teachers contact you, please um, get back with them. If you need help, from 1.30 to 3, you will be able to contact your teachers and they will be able to help you with your homework or any other issues that you're having. Parents and guardians, things that you can do to help us. You keep your, home, your student home if he, he or she exhibits. I just lost it, Chris. If he or she exhibits the... <laughs> He's moving it on me. Sorry about that. So if, you, if you, your son or daughter exhibits any of the following sy symptoms of fever, cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, chills, fatigue, muscle, body aches, headaches, sore throat, new, new loss of taste or smell, congestion, or runny nose, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, they should stay home. Uh, the Department of Public Health is meeting this week to determine exactly what, which one of these symptoms makes it so that you would have to get a COVID test or, or you're recommended to get a COVID test. So the symptoms and whether you're staying at home or coming to school, that's still being worked on by the Department of Public Health. As soon as they get that information to us, we will pass that information on to you. But we will follow the guidelines set forth by ISBE and the Department of Public Health. Call the high school office if your student will be absent. Provide a space at your home for them to complete the re remote learning activities. Maintain an active phone number and email to ensure communication with your students, teachers, and schools and office. Uh, make sure that the office knows at least a phone number on how to get a hold of you in case we have questions or needs. Know to the school of any barriers to remote learning. If, if we are notified of them, we may be able to fix it if, uh, before it becomes an issue for your student. Work with your students, teachers to address student needs. Assessing student skill levels. Teachers will assess student skill levels when returning to school. I know this is a major concern for uh, math teachers on uh, where their students are, where did, they, where did they leave off from the previous school year. So they will be addressing that. Um, between 1.30 and 3, there is, uh, there is uh, the teachers are, will be available for additional help. Special ed, this is important. If you're the parent of a special ed child, you need to work with your SPED teachers to make sure that your students are, are receiving all their IEP requirements. They're being met based on their individualized remote learning plan. Your special ed teacher or your case manager should be getting a hold of you to go over what the remote learning plan will look like. That will probably be within the uh, month of August. Special ed teachers will communicate with the parents to make sure their needs of their students are being met. Uh, flexibility and communication will be critical for the success of the students with special needs and timelines for annual IEP meetings and required evaluations will be met. So just because you, we're going to remote learning or four block does not mean that IEP is not followed. It will be followed. And our teachers will do the best to keep in contact with you. But it's also, parents, we need you to contact the teachers if there is an issue or if there are problems that your, your student is experiencing. Because we want to make sure that they get what they need uh, to be successful here at school. Music and band, and, and these come right from the state board. Students must wear face coverings when, while singing, where they're discouraging indoor rehearsals, so they'll be outside if at all possible. Instruments should not be shared, which we usually don't do it anyway, except maybe if they're on the drums or something. And they can remove their mask while they're playing, but only if necessary. So if your son or daughter's a drummer, they'll have to have their mask on. Hand hygiene with soap and water or hand sanitizers 
can be used before and after performing. Instruments in classrooms will all be claimed before the next session. In driver's ed, we'll do it just sim very similar to the summer. Only two per students and one instructor per vehicle. Face coverings must be worn. No eating or drinking in the vehicle. Open windows if possible. Hand hygiene and the car will be cleaned and disinfected before the next session. PE, face coverings must be worn. Uh, they have to wear a mask. And, I, and let me tell you, nobody likes wearing the mask. I don't like wearing them. Our teachers don't like wearing them. Students don't like wearing them. I've never heard anybody say they like them, but they're a necessity and we have to do it. In PE, the students have to keep that six foot distance between students as much as possible. Any game or sport activities that require close guarding or any potential physical contact with another player must be avoided. Locker rooms won't be used, so they won't have to change clothes, but they will be able to change shoes. And if there's any shared equipment must be cleaned between each student use and disinfected at the end of each class. So what does our school day look like? We will be on a four block system. So your student will, you will choose, they come to school for their four block or they can stay home and do it remotely. So if they chose to come to school, they, they'll get here about 750. We'll do the medical checks, so they'll come in get their breakfast if they need one, take it to the first period class, and at eight o'clock, first period starts at 8.55, and you can see the schedule there. Um, the buses will depart at 12.10. On the way out, they can grab a lunch, and if they are wanting a lunch and they're doing remote learning, they can call the school, and we will set it up with the elementary districts where you will pick lunch up at the elementary district or here at Line A West outside in Circle Drive. Uh, we'll let you know what time to come and we'll bring the meal out to you. Then you'll have remote learning for everybody between 1.30 and 3. And this is to help you with your, your homework, your guided practice, your tutoring, uh, whatever help you need between 1.30 and 3. So you should expect for your student to have a 55 minute class each day and 30 minutes of homework following that. That means 85 minutes per class. At the end of first quarter, those classes you will receive a semester's worth of credit for, unless you have math. And math is the only class that will be um, modified. It will be first quarter and second quarter so that we can catch you, the students up from what they missed last, last year. And we wanna make sure that they're prepared to go on after school, after high school and their career or college with the math that they, they need. So the math will only be half credit for the whole entire semester when the rest of the credits will be given by quarter. So you can see there's some schedules, examples, for example, a freshman, student A, quarter one, they would get driver's ed, English one, and algebra one, and then an elective. And then second quarter, they would have biology, health, algebra one still, and then a second second elective. So your total credits for the entire semester would be three and a half, just like they would be if you had seven periods for a full semester. And if you look at student, uh, ninth grade student group uh, B, or grade student B, you see the first quarter options might be algebra one, driver's ed, English one, then an elective, and second quarter, algebra one, biology one, health, and an elective. There again, three and a half, credits for the entire semester, math being a half, and the rest of them being a half per quarter. Breakfast, students who wish to participate in the school breakfast program will be given a meal to eat in their classroom as they enter the building. At lunch, you'll be giving a, a sack lunch or a hot meal uh, to take with you as you go. If you ride a Carthage Elementary District bus, your bus leaves a little bit later, so we'll have a seating area for you uh, to sit in. I believe we will get out at 11.55 and the bus will leave, I think, at 12.20. So you'll have plenty of time to eat and we can separate you so we have the social distancing that we need. Transportation. We've increased the number of routes for the Dallas area to three and we've also increased the number of routes for the La Harpe area to three. Each bus will have an aid on the bus that will do a temperature check and run through those medical questions before the student is allowed on the bus. If they have 100.4 or answer yes to any of the health questions, 
this is the way we're being told at this time, you will not be allowed on the bus. Um, but the bus driver will notify the school and the school will call and contact the parent. Uh, once the bus arrives at the school, the bus will, aid will notify the high school of any students that were not allowed on the bus and the bus students will be taken in by the district door, district office doors. If you are driving to school or you arrive by your parents dropping you off, you'll come in by the high school entrance and before you're allowed into uh, the school, you will have your temperature checked and, and the health questionnaire gone through. Once, you, once you're starting into the school, you will have to wear a mask. You will have to wear a mask on the bus ride. It's unpleasant. We don't like it. Uh, according to the directions from the state, the buses will have the windows open if at all possible. Uh, and we will wear a mask. Restroom breaks. Um, we will have assigned some assigned restroom breaks, plus the teachers will allow students to leave their classroom for a restroom break when it's needed. And students must wash hands before returning to class. Uh, we've also tried to increase the number of hand washing stations that we have. So we've rented three portable hand washing stations that will go on the end of the East Wing, the West Wing, and uh, between Mr. Supernot and Mr. Short's office. When a student or staff member becomes sick, please stay home. If you test positive for COVID-19, you should stay home. Uh, anyone who shows any signs or symptoms of illness should stay home. Families and staff should also report possible cases to the school where the individual tends to work to initiate contact tracing. Uh, we'll share the information with the Hancock County Health Department. If you've had a fever, you have to stay home for three days, 72 hours after uh, you are without a fever and that you have not had any um, pain medication or fever reducing medication like Tylenol. So if you have a fever uh, and it ends at seven o'clock on a Tuesday evening, you, can, you have to be out 72 hours after that before uh, you can come back to school and Here's the caveat is you have to also have 10 days must pass after the symptoms first appear. So if you get sick on a Saturday, you have 10 days before you can come back to, to school. And you have to have 72 hours without a fever, without fever reducing medication. So you could be out two weeks if you've had a fever. Anyone who is in close contact with COVID-19 or suspected of having COVID-19 should isolate at home and monitor symptoms for 14 days. Close contact at this time means within six feet and uh, of the individual with symptoms or more than 15 minutes. All of the symptoms of when to stay home, all of the questionnaires that we'll have to answer about uh, your temperature and the, and the symptoms before they get on the bus or come into school are very likely going to change after the Department of Public Health meets and comes out with new guidelines. And they may stay the same, but hopefully they're gonna give us more guidance, more detailed guidance as to what we're supposed to do here at school if and when somebody gets sick with COVID-19 or just, you know, they, they have a seasonal allergy, do they have to stay home? We don't have those answers yet. We're, work, we're waiting on the Department of Public Health. Cleaning and disinfecting, as I said, we have three additional hand washing units for uh, students and staff to use. It's important that we wash our hands often during the day. We have extra custodial staff that'll be coming in during the day and after school to do uh, deep cleaning. They'll be cleaning uh, door handles, knobs, desktops, tabletops, light switches. We have several, we have a couple uh, custodians that'll come in like a second shift so that they can clean the rooms when there's no, deep clean the rooms when there's no one around the area and in the room. Um, Wednesday evenings and, and weekends, we'll be doing more extensive cleaning. And if we can do that extensive cleaning every day, and I think we will be able to with the staff we've found and, and hired, we'll be hiring uh, when doing that every evening. So right now we needed, we needed four bus aides. Now we've got all of our aides. We needed additional custodians. We've got those and uh, we are working on the health monitors. Remember, this is all a fluid document. It changes as our guidelines change from the Illinois State Board of Education and the Department of Public Health. 
we have a responsibility to follow the guidelines. We don't have a choice. Um, our attorney, our insurance carrier, the Illinois Department of Public Health, the CDC and ISBE have all said, follow the guidelines. So we may not like it. Uh, we're trying to do the best that we can with these guidelines. And we're still trying to provide the students with a, with a good education. Uh, one of the reasons we went to a four block instead of the seven period day was because if we do have to go remote learning for everybody, seven periods is very difficult for the students and teachers both to keep up with. So we went to a four block with longer time periods so that it's more doable for our students and teachers if we do have to go to that remote learning. So thank you. And if you have questions, please text or send them to Chris. If you send them to my email, I will not get to them tonight for sure because I'm online, um, but we will get to, to the questions that Chris gets. So when Chris gets the email, uh, questions, he'll be asking me and I'll try to answer those for you. Okay. Um, thanks for going through that. Like she was saying. Did you want to put me on video? If you'd like. Yeah. There you go. Um, I'm on video as well. So um, if you want, you can chat me the questions. Uh, I've gotten one through email. Um, checking my phone. I haven't gotten any texts yet. I'm not too upset about that. Um, I've been going through some of the questions that have been getting sent. I'm going to try and kind of put them in together um, format. But if you do have some other questions, feel free. Um, one of the ones that has come up several times is, can students bring their own mask and can they be able to wear their own masks? Can they do what now? They wear, bring their own mask and- From home and be able to wear those masks in the building. They can bring their own as long as they're approved by the faculty or the, the administration. So we have to make sure that, that they meet approval. But for the most part, I can't imagine a mask not being approved unless it's just not going to do the job or it has, has something on there that's uh, not appropriate for school. Um, the half credits, um, a couple of concerns. One, they want to make sure that some of the higher level coursework are, are they able, can we assure them that they're um, able to do the whole level of, of the coursework like chemistry or physics or some of the higher level coursework that they can meet that standard within um, the semester format or the four block format? Yeah, the, the goal is, is that you can meet, meet those standards. Can we guarantee it? No. Um, the way we have to handle it with remote learning and the, and the in-class, in-person is not ideal. Uh, they're going to do the best they can to get through the material. Um, I would make sure that you are, the teachers, I'm sure I know who the chemistry teachers are and those advanced classes are. They're going to teach the whole 55 minutes and they're going to give you homework. And you need to make sure that when you get that homework, that you're online between 1.30 and 3, getting help with that homework and making the best of a, of a bad situation. Uh, I, I, we know our teachers, they give 100% all the time, and they're gonna be there to help our students get through this material and make sure that, that they're ready to go on to college or the workforce or the Army or wherever they're, they're going after graduation. Sure. Um, when a student leaves at noon, is the remote learning in the afternoon a requirement for the coursework or is that more of an open office for, to get help and Okay. It's, we have to attend school five hours a day. That is part of the five hours a day. So to go online at that time uh, is a requirement. Of course, if you're working at home and you don't have questions and you won't be chatting with you and you're not needing help, you won't have to, to chat with the teacher, but you should, uh, you should block out 1.30 to 3 each day to do your homework just in case you would have a question come up and make sure that you get your assignments submitted when they're due or before they're due because it's important that you get those assignments done because your grades count. Okay. Um, if it's a few questions that come up, if you have to stay home due to fever or symptomology, um, can the student then access remote? Yes, that's, that's a great question. If you have to stay home, um, you can remote in and, and be there with your class, just like if you were sitting in the classroom live. So, you know, we're going to end up with kids that have to stay home more because they have one of the, some of these symptoms or they have a fever, but they're still able to do, do their work. And on a normal day, normal year, they would have just came to school with the sniffles. So, um, yeah, please, if, you're, if you have one of those symptoms and you have to stay home, uh, we encourage you to um, do the remote learning. Just, just, you'll have all the information you need after the first two days of school to get that 
remote learning in. Okay. Um, sorry, getting several questions here as I go. Um, why are we assigning Chromebooks and laptops to every student if they have their own at home? I'll let you answer that, Mr. Greenhalls. <laughs> um, for several reasons. One um, is just the consistency of what we give them. Um, the other part of it is that everything that goes out of our building has a filter set up on it um, so that anything that is offsite, they're still getting a filter through the SIPA filter within ours. I think the third pos the part of it is, is that when students actually come in, part of what they'll probably be doing here is some of the work online. And we want to ensure disinfecting of all of the the anything that comes within the building um, and that would end up having to disinfect every laptop that walks through the door. So at this point we felt that um, being able to check one out to every student um, so that we know exactly what they have, um, they're filtered through our, our, our filters um, and then also just making sure that any disinfecting that's done, um, we know what's going on. So those are the three main reasons right now. Um, next, so let's see here. Um, how will weight training work? Now it's been working this summer. It'll be a reduced class size. They'll have to keep six feet apart. Once a, one piece of equipment is used, it'll have to be sanitized before another student can, can use that piece of equipment. Okay. Um, the, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of putting, moving through these. Um, some questions on how are we going to work with kids we know that their classes vary throughout the day. How are we working with kids to ensure that we're maintaining that social distancing when they're going to be changing some of the classes and classrooms? We will, we are going to have arrows on the floor. So there's, and there shouldn't be anybody that's congregating in this, in the, in the hallways. They'll have to go straight to their classrooms. They'll have to go straight to, um, to the next class. There'll be arrows on the floors to, to direct traffic. Remember that social, the close contact is within six feet and for more than 15 minutes. So if they're walking through the hallway and there's less than 50, 50 in a the hallway, then they should be fine. We've also staggered the electives and when students should be uh, leaving the classroom so that we don't have a large number of students in the, in the hallways at a time. Okay. Um, a couple of questions about some of the dual credit coursework with Carl Sandberg and how that's going to be and if we match up with our schedule, that kind of. Um, you know, that's a question for Mr. Bliss, but I believe at this time, and this could change, that dual credit will be in the afternoons and it will be online. That could change. And if you have questions about dual credit, please call Mr. Bliss or email Mr. Bliss. Okay. Um, just a couple questions about co-op students and how that program might or might not look. All right, the co-op students will not be able to go to work in the morning before school and come to school, but they will be able to leave at noon and go to work. Okay. Or if they're co-op classes at, at 11, they can leave at 11 like they normally would. Okay, a um, couple questions about um, schedules. If their students are getting um, what classes they had asked for, how we're going to give them the new schedules. That Mr. Bliss is working on right now. Um, He's doing the best that he can to get the students the classes that they wanted. Um, they may not, but that, that's any year, they may not get exactly what they wanted. So uh, class schedules will be coming out in the near future. I know he was working on them again late today and he will continue to work on them. Hopefully the class schedules will be out at the beginning of August. Okay. Um, one question about LC students. Are they remote or are they at school learning as well? They can do either way, remote or at school, because it's edgenuity for those learning center students. And they'll be able to um, click on or, or join their edgenuity from home if they choose remote learning. Okay. Um, how would parents go about declaring whether they're choosing the in-person or the remote learning option? On starting tomorrow, there will be a survey out. It'll be on our website. Please go to the website and say, and you'll have to put down your name, your student's name, and, and then check a box they want remote learning or they want in-person learning. If your ch child chooses to be here in person at the beginning of the year and finds out that they just simply cannot tolerate the mask, then you know, let the administration know, we'll change it to remote learning. We aren't gonna go back and forth. 
if your student is doing remote learning and they find out that's pretty difficult to do and they, they've heard from their friends that at school is not so bad, and they want to go come back and do the in-person learning, uh, please let us know. We'll, we'll change that also. Uh, we, we cannot have them making make one choice and then another, then another, then another, but we can, we will accommodate at the beginning of the quarter if, if there needs to be a change. I think the key here is everybody needs to be flexible. The school needs to be flexible. Parents need to be flexible. The students and teachers need to be flexible because we're all uh, trying to get through a bad situation the best way we can. Okay. Um, if the schedule goes into that second semester, um, do we know what classes or kind of an idea of what classes they'll be taking third and fourth quarters? I don't at this time. And I know Mr. Bliss is working on first semester right now, and then he'll start working on second semester, but it'll be the general freshman classes that you would have during the second semester, sophomore classes you would have se second semester and on. Okay. Uh, are they using any lockers? No, they'll have their, their, all their supplies and books will be in the classroom with them. So we would encourage you to buy a, a backpack, but we won't, we won't require that. If they change classes for a period, there'll be a place in the classroom for them to leave their supplies so they don't have to carry it all to the other class and back. We also have um, carrying cases for all of the laptops and Google Chromebooks that we will be handing out. Okay. Um, had one question about uh, working with parents on drop-offs. Um, in town drop off bus stops for some of those kids that might be walking home because they used to be picked up by parents, but with the new schedule that might not work. Are they gonna be doing any work with um, bus stops and allowing children to walk from those bus stops? I might not have worded that correctly. I don't know if I understand the question. Um, we'll, have, we'll have added routes for the La Harp and Dallas area. So if we're talking about La Harp and Dallas area, you'll have bus drivers getting a hold of you in August as to uh, what time they'll be picking up your student and when, um, where they'll be picking up your student. If you want them uh, dropped off at a different location, we'll need to know that at that time. But work with your, your bus drivers. Adding a route should help really help with uh, lowering the number of kids on each bus and shortening the time on the bus because we realize that we're asking those kids that ride a bus from La Harp and Dallas to have a mask on for a very long time. And that's one of the reasons we wanna go to four block and get those kids home earlier so and get the mask off. Okay. Um, someone's asking about, they have a student that is going through driver's ed, but they feel more comfortable with remote learning. Is there a way that you're going to try and work with? We will, we will work with you on, on the driver's ed, but they will have to wear a mask with driver's ed. And if we will not be able to go get your student for driver's ed and then take them back. So if there's a transportation issue that, that the school's going to have to, to do, that will be an issue, but otherwise we can get, if you can get them to school when um, the driver's ed teachers get it scheduled, we can get the driving in, but they will have to wear a mask and follow the guidelines while they're here at school. Okay. Um, I had someone text in a question. Is there going to be a freshman orientation or videos or e-learning prior to the first day of school? I'll probably answer that. Um, we're in the process of developing a website that will have videos that go all the way from the very basics of turning on and troubleshooting um, all the way to full remote learning, what software they're using, um, what, um, how to Zoom, how to get onto Google Classroom. So that will be something we will not have, as I'm aware, we'll not have a specific freshman orientation at this time, but we will try and put everything we possibly can on um, online and in that video format. Um, and then I'll answer this. Uh, another question is um, we're still in the planning stages of putting all of the laptops into bags and then we'll have a day where students come in, they check those out. Um, and that would also probably be the day they check out books and any other um, uh, items for the remote learning. Um, sorry, several things going here. Um, if a student has symptoms of COVID-19 during the school day, they suddenly come up, um, do we have, or, or have we worked out with a hospital or a nursing to, to do some screening and, and how to treat? Yeah, we actually have a, an intern starting in, um, when school starts that's going into public health and she's uh, already has a degree, a, a nursing degree. So she'll be kind of uh, lining up the 
she'll be here helping us with uh, COVID testing, not so that we're going to do COVID testing, but the symptoms check and the, and the uh, temperature check. And she'll be contacting parents and she'll be contacting the health department if needed and be that liaison between the parents, the school and, and the health department. If they come up with symptoms during the day, we will have an isolation area. In fact, we're gonna probably kick Mr. Schneider out of his office so that we can leave the door open for the secretaries to monitor the student and the student can have uh, that, that room until a parent can get there to pick them up. All right. Um, that is the questions I have currently. Um, are there any other people that want to uh, or speak about any questions that they might have? Um, I'm checking my email, my text, and the chat. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions currently. I really appreciate those that um, did speak up in this. I'm sorry that we can't do the audio, but everyone's going to talk over everyone if we do that. Um, are there any other questions that you guys might have? Feel free to chat, text, email. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I appreciate the community wanting to learn what's going to happen when we start back to school. And if you have questions, please feel free to e email me. If you have tech questions, email Mr. Greenhalgh. Uh, he's the best person to answer that. Uh, if you uh, questions on scheduling, uh, pick up of your uh, supplies and things, contact Mr. Schneider or Mr. Bliss or Mr. Short, and they can help you on some of those. But if you email one of us and we don't have the answer, we'll get you the answer or we'll get you to the right person. We'll forward your email on to the right person to get the answer for you. All right. Well, uh, I have not had anyone bring any more questions yet. There's a couple that have some ideas of what they want. Um, I did have one just come up, um, students with IEPs, you had visited that on the form. Um, do you want to just cover that again quickly? IEP students, they will, your IEP will be followed. Uh, they may have a remote a learning plan added to their IEP that, about how things will be handled if they are on remote learning and during remote learning times. Um, evaluations and everything are on, still on the same timeline. Please contact your, your student's case manager with any needs that your student has or you have or any questions that you have. Uh, we want to make sure that we are there for your student and that we are meeting their needs in any way possible. Again, flexibility and communication between the students and, and the special is, uh, is very important and is good communication with the parents is important. So we're going to just have to really uh, communicate a lot follow the IEP. I'm sure our teachers are going to be trying to do their best with the IEPs and, and making sure all the accommodations are followed. Uh, this is something that's required by law, so we will do what we need to do. Okay. Um, there are a few that are bringing some ideas that they feel might help, um, and I'll bring that to the committee and, okay. and to superintendent and administrative team. Um, as we continue to work on this transition plan. Um, at this point, uh, if I don't have any more questions coming up, um, what we'll do is we'll shut this down. As I said, I'm going to record this and have recorded this. Um, I'll be putting that out on YouTube tomorrow morning. Um, and um, so you can watch back through this. The documents that you've seen here today are all online, so you can look over those documentation. Um, and then on the agenda, which I pulled up right here. Um, there's several different ways that you can get in touch um, with us. Um, email is probably the best way. Um, I'll be glad to answer and, and forward on. And then you can continue to text questions to that, but um, don't do it too late if you can help it. Um, I like sleeping occasionally. So um, if that's what we have tonight, I really appreciate you guys coming on. Thank you for being um, a great group. Um, and we will uh, stop this for tonight. If you have any questions, please feel free to let us know. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much. I'll be stopping the meeting now.